Hi everyone, Alternate Recaps here. Today, we are going to explain a psychological horror movie called Smile. This is the movie you love, retold in an entirely new way. The film opens with a haunting image of a woman's bedroom, where the aftermath of an overdose is evident. The camera pans to the young daughter who has just walked into the room, and is faced with the tragic sight of her mother's lifeless body. The film fast-forwards to the present day, where the daughter, Dr. Rose Cotter, now a therapist, goes about her daily routine at work. She encounters a patient, Carl, who is in the midst of a manic episode, ranting about death and insisting that he is going to die. Despite Dr. Cotter's attempts to reassure him, Carl's episode persists. Dr. Cotter then takes on an unexpected emergency session with graduate student Laura Weaver at Mount Pleasant Hospital. Haunted by the ghost of a cursed malevolent presence, Laura, reeling from the recent traumatic incident of witnessing her professor's suicide, fervently claims that her life has been consumed by an unseen force that only she can sense. Despite Dr. Cotter's diagnosis of hallucinations, Laura remains convinced that the malevolent entity possesses the ability to disguise itself as others, donning an eerie smile. As she declares her impending death, Laura's demeanor suddenly shifts to frenzied desperation, before ending her own life with a shocking display of self-harm, right before Dr. Cotter's eyes. As Dr. Cotter is questioned about the tragic event, she is taken aback when one of the detectives conducting the interview turns out to be none other than her past flame, her ex-boyfriend Joel. Still in shock from what she witnessed, Dr. Cotter shares the story of the cursed, malevolent entity with a haunting smile, as shared with her by Laura. As visions of Laura's eerie smile haunt her, Dr. Cotter delves into the mystery of Gabriel Munoz's suicide, uncovering a disturbing pattern of strange smiling before death. While visiting her patient Carl Rankin, who had been hospitalized for a manic episode, Dr. Cotter is met with an ominous smile and terrifying threats from Carl, leading her to call for security. Orderlies restrain Carl as Dr. Cotter's imagination runs wild, imagining his aggressive behavior, only to find out it was all in her mind. Convinced that the trauma of Laura's death may have pushed Dr. Cotter over the edge, her superior Dr. Morgan Desai grants her a week of leave to recover her mental well-being. As she is plagued by another terrifying vision of Laura, Dr. Cotter's solitude is interrupted by the blaring of her security alarm. A taunting message from an unknown caller, posing as the security operator, adds to her unease. But when the real operator calls, her fears are confirmed that someone has breached her home. As her fiancé Trevor returns home, Dr. Cotter realizes her beloved cat is missing. Dr. Cotter listens to the audio recording of her session with Laura. She is suddenly overcome with fear, requiring her fiancé Trevor to calm her nerves. Worried about her own mental state, Dr. Cotter turns to her former therapist, Dr. Madeline Northcutt, for help. As she recounts her recent hallucinations, Madeline attributes her symptoms to her long-buried guilt over her mother's suicide. Despite Dr. Cotter's request for antipsychotic medication, Madeline denies the request, leaving her without a clear path to recovery. As she attend a birthday party for Dr. Cotter's nephew Jackson at her sister Holly's house, the festive mood is abruptly interrupted when Jackson opens Dr. Cotter's gift to find her deceased cat inside. Despite her fervent protests of innocence, Dr. Cotter is racked by another vision of Laura, causing her to trip and fall through a glass table, leaving the party guests horrified. As her mental state deteriorates, Dr. Cotter attempts to confide in her fiancé Trevor about the curse she believes has befallen her. But Trevor dismisses her claims and instead accuses her of inheriting mental illness from her mother and of killing their cat. Dr. Cotter pays a visit to Gabriel Munoz's widow, Victoria, where she is shown disturbing sketches Gabriel had drawn of a sinister entity he claimed was trying to possess him. Dr. Cotter also discovers that Gabriel's descent into madness was triggered by the death of his brother 20 years prior, and that his obsession with the curse began after he witnessed a woman committing suicide at a conference. When Dr. Cotter persistently presses for the woman's identity, Victoria becomes agitated and throws her out of the house. Dr. Cotter enlists the help of her ex-boyfriend Joel to further investigate the case. Using his police computer, Joel uncovers a file on Angela Powell, 
the real estate agent Gabriel Munoz witnessed die. The evidence shows that Angela had also seen a smiling man brutally cut his own neck with gardening shears at a gas station, days before her death. Dr. Cotter returns home to find that her fiancé Trevor has arranged for an intervention with her former therapist, Dr. Northcott, over her deteriorating mental state, leaving her feeling betrayed. Enraged, she takes the copies of Joel's files to her sister Holly's house, where she tries to share her discovery of the curse, only to be met with disbelief and accusations of mimicking the behavior of their abusive mother. Joel reaches out to Dr. Cotter with a shocking revelation. His further investigations uncovered a pattern of 20 cases, all involving witnesses to 19 suicides, with the exception of accountant Robert Talley, who, instead of taking his own life, brutally murdered a stranger four days after witnessing his business partner's suicide. A week later, the eyewitness to Robert's actions committed suicide and the pattern began anew. Joel takes Dr. Cotter to meet Robert Talley in jail as she shares her theory that the malevolent entity possesses individuals before they take their own lives, and her fear that her time with the curse is running out. In jail, Robert Talley whispers to Dr. Cotter that the only way to break the curse's cycle is to kill someone else, with a witness present, as the entity thrives off of traumatic experiences. But as he realizes Dr. Cotter is currently under the curse's influence, Robert becomes increasingly panicked, leaving her with a difficult decision. Dr. Northcutt pays a visit to Dr. Cotter at her home, but she soon realizes that the presence has taken on Madeline's form. As the real Madeline calls her on the phone, Dr. Cotter is faced with an eerie smiling doppelganger, threatening her. Armed with a kitchen knife, Dr. Cotter sets off to the hospital, plagued by a vision of brutally murdering her patient Carl in front of Dr. Desai, who then rips off his own face. As the real Dr. Desai discovers Dr. Cotter in her car with a weapon, he attempts to summon help, but she quickly drives away in a hurry. Joel contacts Dr. Cotter to inform her that an all-points bulletin has been issued for her based on her alarming encounter with her boss at the hospital. Dr. Cotter, in a cryptic and determined tone, tells Joel that she is going to face the entity head-on, and that she needs to be alone to ensure no one else inherits the curse. Dr. Cotter drives to her childhood home, now abandoned, where her mother took her own life. Inside, she is confronted by a vision of her mother, who accuses her of not calling for help and allowing her to die by overdose. Dr. Cotter retorts, accusing her mother of being an abusive monster. The vision then transforms into a tall, lanky creature that launches an attack on her. Dr. Cotter fights back by setting the creature ablaze with an oil lantern, she then makes a run for it as the entire house is consumed by the raging inferno. Dr. Cotter visits Joel to express her remorse for involving him in her predicament and for not being emotionally present during their relationship. But her hopes of redemption are crushed when she notices Joel's eerie smile, realizing that the curse still persists. She sprints outside only to discover that she has been trapped in an illusion and never actually left her childhood home. The true Joel arrives at the dilapidated house, but Dr. Cotter, in a manic state, locks him out in a desperate attempt to protect him. The creature violently pries open her mouth as Joel manages to break into the house. He is horrified to witness Dr. Cotter set herself on fire, her face twisted into a sinister smile. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for future videos or just to say hi. Thanks for the support. Catch you in the next one.